When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Like, listen, dude, we were... uh... (laughs) <laughs> we were on a job this is a new construction job we were we were roughing a slab in you know the underground before the concrete's poured mm-hmm. and uh we were there at the, the same time as the concrete guys and i love working around them because i've gotten to well i don't you know we don't do new construction anymore so it's fun to like reminisce but i had some good friends you know in, in other trades because you get to know them all and you're working around them. But we were on this job one time. And so it was us roughing the slab in and the concrete guys were digging the footers. Right. So they're right around us and they're telling these funny stories. And, um, one of the guys like shows up unannounced and he jumped, I mean, he's, he's late for work. So he jumps out of the car and he runs up. His girlfriend dropped him off. And, um, He's wearing one work boot and a fucking slipper on the other foot. And we're like, and I don't know if there's a, there's a difference between verbiage here because slipper here is the same thing as a house shoe. It's like what you'd wear out to get the mail. Are the yeah, they're stuff. slippers. Yep. Slippers. Yeah. We're good. So uh, he comes running up, man, and he's got a slipper on. And we are like watching it all unfold. And the guys are like, what are you doing, man? What like what's going on? You got one house shoe on, and he's like, "Dude, listen, man, I didn't want to be late. Um, I woke up late, and I, I I gotta have this job, and I just I just the main thing I was thinking about was being here. I'm paraphrasing, of course, mm-hmm. but the boss, you know, there's always one big boss on the job, and he looked over and and they were all wondering, like, is the dude fired? And he said, he said, am I fired? And he's like is that the right work boot? And he had his right footed and it was on his right foot. And he said, yeah. <laughs> so this dude gets to work digging the footers with one work boot and one house shoe on one slipper on. And like, dude, we're dying laughing. So he works all day like that, you know? And at the end of the day, this slipper is shredded. I mean, it, it's not even, it's barely hanging on and it's got red mm-hmm. clay all over it. And, uh, he, we're sitting there, you know, before we all head home and we're just kind of talking about how, you know, the typical situation, man, I guess he'd been, you know, out the night before he he was a younger cat. So maybe him and his girlfriend were fighting, Mm -hmm. but he knew he had to be at work, man, at all costs. He had to be there. And, uh, he got there and he kept his job, but you should have seen his, his, his sock, man. His sock was like this long. (laughs) <laughs> and it was just like like he had just been thrown in a pool and he got out and his sock was stretched out, red clay everywhere. And she came and picked him back up, man. And, and I remember seeing him walk, kind of limp to the car and he got in and and went home. And, and you know, that was the only time that, that I saw that ever happen. But crazy <laughs> ass stories. And he kept his job, man. I mean, <laughs> so. Well, that's the most important thing, right? Yeah. And I think that, yeah, I think that, you know, the fact that you're willing to show up, you may not be a hundred percent and we don't all have days that we're a hundred percent, but man, just being there and fighting through, he kept his job, man. And I, I hope that he's doing well. It's, that's been years ago, but God, that was oh. funny. Oh man. The stories from the, the new, you were saying you're working on new construction. Uh, one story, and this is going to go in a completely different realm of the slipper. This is, this was, we were friends with a lot of the other trades guys, but then there's the guys you don't get along with. Right. Yeah. Um, so I remember we were doing work for this one contractor and there was an HVAC guy, but we just didn't get along with them. Right. Like they were always in our way. They were always like, they, they put their duct in right below a toilet. And now we got to go find them and have them take it out. And then they get all pissed off. Mm-hmm. So I don't even remember what happened. I, at the time I was working for someone else and we had this old ornery, guy that worked for us um he was he was a former green beret um and he just had these like ridiculous tattoos all over his body 
he had a butterfly tramp stamp. Like just like this guy just went home and he drank every night. Yeah, I had a butterfly <laughs> tramp stamp on his back. Yeah, yeah, he did. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, he went into the this was when he was fresh out of the service from uh he was serving in Korea um during the Korean War and he um he got fresh home and he got he, he tied one on pretty good and he walked into a uh into a tattoo shop and he wanted to get a dotted line across his throat that said cut here and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> so instead <laughs> he made the tattoo, the ethical <laughs> tattoo artist. So instead he made the tattoo guy tattoo a butterfly tramp stamp on his back. Uh but that just tells you a little bit about this guy. He actually just died last year. Uh um but uh he got into a fight with this tin guy. Uh we call him tin knockers around here. I don't know what y'all call the sheet metal guys down there, but the HVAC guys. Yeah. Um, but he got into an argument with this guy. And fortunate for him, this guy had a very red- regimented schedule. Show up, eat breakfast, work for a couple hours, eat lunch at eleven forty-five. And when he was done with lunch, he would visit the porta potty. Right? Mm-hmm. So this guy, like clockwork, every day, every day, every day. So this guy, his name was Ish. Um, Ish comes up with the great idea that this guy's really been pissing me off, and I want this guy to be as uncomfortable as possible. He goes out to the porta potty while this guy's eating lunch, unrolls all the toilet paper, grabs a bat of insulation, and rubs down the toilet paper (laughs) with fiberglass insulation and then rolls it back up. Let's just say he got him back good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was, you know, uh, well, you he was regiment. He was that regimented that he they knew yeah. he was going to the quarter. Of it. And it was about 120 degrees outside. Oh. What I just can't man. imagine that. I can't imagine that. Yeah. And those guys, man, those those that type that we're a part of that we come from, that that's every day for them. They would practical joke. Oh, yeah. Bully, Throw rocks at the portalette, man. I've I've got so many stories about like, and, and there are a lot of <laughs> you got to find the humor in the hard times, right? You got to find mm-hmm. the humor because there are some there are people go through some hard times that um, aren't funny at the time, but when you look back on them and everybody made it through, like mm-hmm. it is pretty funny. Like there was this dude, I didn't see this happen, but he was telling the story. Like we used to work for this. Um, we used to do maintenance work, maintenance plumbing for this apartment complex when I worked for my old boss. So in the mornings we'd get together and we would kind of be hanging around the, like the maintenance office before we got all our work orders to go do the jobs. And uh, this dude, man, his name was David. And he just, I, I, I don't know if he's still alive or not. This has been, most of these stories are years and years old, but he was telling this story about how he used to work at the shipyard. The shipyard's real big around here. We're a port city and a lot of people have gone through the shipyard working. So it's mostly like welding jobs and like any time in the maritime, any trade in the maritime industry. And he was talking about how he was going through hard times and he didn't have any money. And uh, this particular job he had, you had to bring your lunch every day. And it wasn't an option to like run to the store and get a pizza and a Coke or whatever. There was, you, you came there and you stayed all day. So whatever you had to bring, that's what you had to eat. And uh, he was talking about how he got up one morning and if, I don't know why all these stories include fighting with your, with your significant other, but he was, <laughs> you know, they had been fighting yeah. and he was late and he was, he was trying to, throw together something to eat for lunch. And he said, man, we didn't have any money. And I didn't have any food in the refrigerator. I opened it up and all I saw was some mayonnaise and a pineapple and some other random things that just wouldn't go together. And he he said, I had somewhat of a loaf of bread left. So he's like, dude, this is all I got, man. And he made a, mayonnaise and pineapple sandwich and he wrapped it up and <laughs> took it to work and he's like I'm, i was gonna be so embarrassed to pull this thing out and you know he was like i gotta come up with something 
you know, so he'd been thinking about it all all morning long. Like he, they all sat together, and most of the time, when you sit together with a big group of guys in the blue collar trades, you're just janking each other, making fun of each other, and uh, so he got to thinking, and when it was lunchtime they were all sitting there and he pulled that sandwich out, man. And it was, it was imagine, dude, <laughs> mayonnaise and pineapple. So sitting there yeah. all most of the morning, he pulls it out and everybody's like, what the hell you, what are you eating for lunch? And he's, he's like, Oh man, you ain't never had a mayonnaise. You ain't never had a mayonnaise and pineapple. Sandwich? He's like, Oh man, I love them. He said, man, something about, you know, especially when it's hot like this and like, the mayonnaise and the and the pineapple, it just man, it's just really you wouldn't think it, but it uh it really cools you down and it, it it's really refreshing. And like he went on and on and he said, Before long, man, these guys that were like dogging him out, they were looking, they was like, Really, man? Man, you got another one of those man <laughs> you got another one of those mayonnaise and pineapple sandwiches, man. I might want one. And he was like, dude, before long, everybody wanted to go home and make one. And he just made up the story. Like he <laughs> The reason he brought it is he didn't have shit else, you know, and uh, just, you know, just having an attitude of like, man, I got to make the best of what what's around. And mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Tony, can you hear me? I can hear you. You turn off your mic and turn it back on. It's playing on you. It's playing you on a loop of you laughing about the pineapple and mayonnaise sandwich. I can't get it to stop. Hey, every professional tradesman knows you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint, right? So why are you trying to build your home service business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Pro Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable home service business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab the Million Dollar Pro Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner listener. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash free and start building success. The point of that story was, man, you just got to make the best of what's around. And uh, even if it's a pineapple and mayonnaise sandwich, you got to <laughs> eat. disgusting. Just rock and roll with it. Yeah, it, it was disgusting, man. Uh, so that same house with the fiberglass situation, we used to get there. We'd get there at six every day, right? And we were usually the first ones on site. But this house was like, it was pretty much done at this point. And it was just me and two other guys pretty much that did all this work. Um, so, I mean, the it was a finished basement. They had two like $8,000 water heaters in the basement. Because uh, it was this huge, like probably 10,000 square foot house with like eight bathrooms, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a bathroom in the basement. There were two bedrooms in the basement. The basement is completely finished. Um, so we'd get there at six and then, you know, you'd pick up whatever, a bagel or a breakfast sandwich from somewhere and you'd sit in your truck for a couple minutes and you'd eat it. And that day the Mason was there before us. Um, and he spoke, he spoke very broken English. So I'm sitting there eating my sandwich and he comes out, he knocks on my window He's like, excuse me, sir. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? He's like, I think there might be a little leak in the basement. I was like, oh, okay, I'll be right in. He's like, I think you should come now. I was like, okay. I'm like, what is he talking about? There's a little leak in the basement and I should come now. Dude, when I tell you, we got to the top of the basement steps and there was four feet of water in this basement. Whoa. Like literally four feet, like take off your shoes and wade down there and shut the water main off. 
and oh in God. Jersey, when your house is more than two and a half story, so if like that third floor is completely finished, right? You need to have a you need to have a fire sprinkler system in the house. Mm-hmm. So, luckily, it wound up not being our our fault, but there's two water mains that come in. There's a two inch water main for the plumbing. And then there's another two inch water main that we brought in for the fire sprinkler. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when they hooked up after our shutoff out, when they hooked up the backflow, they didn't tighten it up and the backflow blew off in the middle of the night. And there was four feet of water in this basement. Both those water heaters had to be replaced. They had to, they had to gut the whole basement. It was insane. It was crazy, but it was just so funny. He's like, I think there's a little leak in the basement. You might want to come check it out. And I get that. Yeah, like, I'll was, get to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get around to it. There was four feet of water. In this brand new. He didn't know how I to mean, articulate how serious he was. He yeah, was like, like it was, I mean, I mean, we're probably talking what, like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage, right? Like all the plumbing fixtures in the bathroom had to be thrown out. All the sheetrock had to be removed. All the tile had to be removed. Oh, man. All the electrical had to be redone. Oh, what a nightmare. Oh, man. What a. Luckily, it wasn't my fault. I'd feel really bad if it was my fault, but it wasn't. Yeah. Was that the first thing you said when you walked in and <laughs> looked at the four feet? Well, not our fault. See you later. <laughs> oh, we had, a, we had a trash pump running down there for like three days to get all the water out. It was crazy. Oh, man. It, just this huge, gorgeous house and. That's why you got to make sure you tighten everything down. (laughs) Gorgeous, minus the basement. Hey, listen, like you talked about not being, not liking to work with, like you always, you always butted heads with the the tin. What do do you call them? Tin knockers. Tin, Tin knockers. Like one of the trades that I couldn't stand being on the job at the same time as was the roofers like i don't i don't have anything against them but like we we would have to be in the house while they're just man yeah they're just banging like, on the roof oh, oh it's the worst and all day and, long. That, and you were even having flashbacks about that a couple of weeks ago we were talking on a saturday morning you were trying to sit outside on your porch and they were putting a roof on next door yeah man just it sounded like a machine gun going off um and it's just constant all day long but since we're kind of in the spirit of telling funny stories there was a um there was a roofing crew where they would always show up in this big like red chevy truck with a camper shell on the back and all and all like it was about this is like a five-man crew and they all rode in the back of the truck on the way there they always just rode in the back of the truck and the guy the boss he he had to be 75 years old and he was a bigger, like stockier guy, had like a beard, and always wore like a like a fishing hat and glasses. Like he wore glasses like down on his nose. Like he was reading, he'd be re- looking at something, but he'd be looking over his glasses at you, you know? So uh we we had a situation. Like we were anytime like we worked for this particular track home builder, and anytime there was roofers on the job. It was them, you know, so we'd, we'd run in and f- into them from time to time. And the boss would always sit in his, uh, in his chair. I mean, in his truck on the driver's side, and he would be making these fly fishing lures. That's all he did. Like he, he was, he was only there to transport, transport them to the job and then off the job. So he's always sitting there just making lures all day long in the hot, cold, doesn't matter. And anytime you'd walk up to him, he'd be making those fishing lures like this, like looking at him, and then he'd go to talk to you, and he'd like look down like that, and he'd be whatever you had to say. Um, and it was the funniest thing because anytime the roofers would disappear over the roof, like, and they were that he couldn't see them for a long time, he'd beep the horn, and they'd like stick their head up, "Hey, we're still here." <laughs> like, that was his call side. Like that was like, it was the funniest thing because that's they knew what he meant. Like he didn't trust that they didn't just go over the back and take off running, like mm-hmm. to get away. I don't know why. One of them always he had like a house arrest bracelet on on his ankle, 
So maybe he had to keep keep up with him, but he had to keep tabs on him. Yeah, and that particular guy, man, he was with him for a long time. I mean, he wasn't going anywhere. I guess he had limited options. He had a um, he had a house arrest bracelet on. So, um, but there was one guy that just his only job was to carry like this was before the days where they had those trucks that had the big long arms and they could take the pallets of, of shingles and then unload them on top of the house. They, uh, they would deliver them on a pallet on the ground. And the one guy we called they called him the shingle toter. He would put like packs of shingles on his back and mm-hmm. then walk over and climb this rickety extension ladder. And then, He'd, he'd unload them and he did that all day long man all day long and the roofers they were just they, i i guess i guess they appreciated him but man they were back and forth all day long just dogging him out and he would cuss at him he'd just be like i mean he had the worst attitude though just his whole demeanor and thinking back on it it's like man i guess if all i had to do was put shingles over my shoulder and take them over there and climb up and down again. It's almost like the, the tale of Sisyphus, you know, he got, he got sentenced to <clears> rolling <throat> a rock up a hill and then it rolled down the other side. So, and it got to where it, it was the things that they would say back and forth to each other were, were so, it was a lot of profanity and, and, and that's not a surprise on a, on a job site like that, but it was, it was really, it was really bad. And I walked over to Blaine, the the guy's name, the owner of the of the company was, I think his name was Blaine, and he was sitting over there making fishing lures, like he was, just like this, just like, and I walked over, I was like, man, um, how do you how do you like keep that guy around? You know, I'm young, I'm just a young gung ho business owner. I'm like, how do you um, why do you put up with that on your job site, like? why do you put up with somebody talking like that? And this is like, a, this is a, an epiphany. I didn't realize that at the time, but it was really a, a profound lesson early on in my career. Old Blaine, after I asked him that, a ser- what I thought was a serious question, he's just looking and he looks up at me and he's like, if I fire him, who's going to tote the damn shingles? And then he just went back and I was like, <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> I was expecting some long drawn out response. And then he just went back to like, are you done? Cause I'm fit- making fishing lure soup. <laughs> Take a hike. But like, seriously, like if you, this guy was not customer facing that this was a job that it was a construction site. So mm-hmm. he was like, I don't want to tote the shingles. I'm making fishing lures and the roofers are not coming down. They get paid by the square. Mm-hmm. So you tell me what, what would you do if, you know, I'm not toting them. And so that was, that was funny because I was dumbfounded and I just walked off and I was like, man, old Blaine's pretty damn smart. You know, he, <laughs> <laughs> just leave the shingle toter alone. How's it work in Alabama? You gotta, you gotta put the roof boots on yourself when you're doing the new construction. No, they put them on. You just have to have them on site and uh-huh. leave them like, leave them on the porch or something. That's how it is now, but back in the day, it wasn't. We used to have to put them on, and I was fine with it. I mean, I've been on four four story house, go up on the roof, no problem. Yeah, man. And then one time, it was this three story house. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't a huge house or anything. It was just I got up onto the roof, and I, you know, you you get up on the roof and you kind of walk up, you walk up to the top of a gable and you sit at the you sit at the top of the roof and then you make your way to wherever you got to go. Yeah. But I got up to the top of that gable roof and I froze. And I was like, I, I can't go down. I can't go up. Um, I, 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 I was never scared of heights until that moment. And I'm sitting there up on the roof and my little cousin's down at the bottom foot in the ladder. And I'm like, I don't know. It's t- I can't, I can't move. I'm like, you might as well just like order me dinner and, throw it up to me or something <laughs> call ashley yeah call ashley tell her i live here now um and there's gonna be no way to get i thought i was gonna have to call the fire department to get me down i swear to god <laughs> i live here now <laughs> literally i was just like we're either gonna have to call the fire department or i just live here because there ain't no way i'm getting off this roof 
<laughs> when I tell you, I was I was up there for probably about an hour before I got the courage to make my way back down to the ladder and climb down. Never yeah. been on a roof ever since. Yeah, I've been in I've been in that situation where like it's it's almost like the roof's like dumping you off. Like it, it was fine for a minute, but now it's like mm-hmm. and plus those roofers they carry those 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 foam those old couch cushions around and sometimes mm-hmm. they wear jogging pants so they won't slide. Mm-hmm. You know, that's out of necessity because if not, dude, the, the same guy that, that I'm telling you about that had the house arrest bracelet on the whole time, mm-hmm. I want to paint a picture of him because he's an important character in the story. Like he, he always, <laughs> he, was, he was a skinny, um, w- like a wiry guy, always had his shirt off because he was always in the sun. He was tan and he had tattoos all over him, um, dark hair, and he had tennis shoes and a house arrest bracelet on he fell off one time dude he fell off the roof one time and you know what old blaine did like he uh he fell off we all saw him like fall (laughs) off and disappear and uh blaine look blaine old blaine looked up like this and he beat the he beat the horn and he's like the dude popped up and he's like i'm all right i'm all right he landed on a pile of dirt (laughs) He Blaine beat the horn open. at him after he fell off the roof. Yeah, he did. He didn't even open the door to his truck. He barely even looked over his glasses, and he just went. Mur, mur. <laughs> did he own the roofing company, or was the GC? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I just assumed that he did. I, I assumed that it was a small, uh, you know, one truck operation. Can you imagine falling owned. off a roof, and you're just like so thankful to have a job because you're on house arrest that the owner beeps at you, and you're just it's like, oh, sorry, sorry, sir. On me. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> he doesn't even come to check on you like, hey, is anything broken? You feel okay? Let's face it. Home service companies are a dime a dozen, and Mrs. Jones has many to choose from. Now, it may not be PC, but she does judge a book by its cover. That's why there's Kick Charge, the industry's leading and most awarded branding and truck wrap design agency who has been instrumental in getting home service providers noticed for over 20 years. And right now, Kick Charge is offering a $500 rebate to all Coaches Corners listeners. To get more information, go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash kick charge and start getting noticed today. Yeah, the, he, no, none of that. He didn't even open the door. It, oh, man, but it was once, once we realized that he landed, you know, because there's a pile of dirt from where they threw dirt out for the slab, you know, and um, thank God it was right there. And this was like this, like this was a track home, so it wasn't like it was a 12 on 12 pitch or anything. He just fell mm-hmm. off. And, but still, man, he fell off the roof. Old Blaine just honked the horn at him. You know where they got a uh, – you know how, like, they'll do, like, temporary stairs in the new construction houses before they put the real stairs in? Yeah. Well, we were working on a Saturday, and on Friday they took the old stairs out in preparation for the new stairs going in on Monday. But it was like this little – it's like one of those little things where it's like you go down, like, four steps, and then there's an exit door. Mm-hmm. And then you can go down to the basement. I don't know if you got anything like that by you, but yeah, not much. I had to get down to the basement, but there were no stairs, but it was like four steps. Right. So it was just like, you know, hold on to the wall, put your, put your foot down. There was a concrete block wall there um, in between the basement, the two sets of stairs, man. When I tell you, I ate shit the hardest I've ever eaten shit in my entire life. <laughs> I went to put my foot down. I was hold. I was like, no, I wasn't holding on that time because I was like, I got to get down there. So I just went to step, and I missed it. I missed the wall completely, mm-hmm. and landed like I fell like eight feet onto that cinder block wall. Um, oh my god! And then I, I like my. I thought my leg was broken. It hurt so bad. I went to roll off of that wall because there were no stairs. Right, like I went to go roll onto the ground, and mm-hmm. I fell down the basement stairs. <laughs> directly after that (laughs) like there's so much happening in this uh in this fall dude my whole leg was like bright purple for like two months i couldn't walk for like three days it was brutal uh, my leg landed flat and i think i would have broke my leg my phone was in my pocket and my phone my phone i had like an otter box case and i think it like displaced the energy from like hitting the concrete wall like i think i definitely would have broke my leg if my phone didn't displace the energy to like the whole leg rather than one particular spot yeah. oh my god but i was there by myself 
There was <laughs> there was no one there. I just I fell, I hurt myself, and then I fell down another flight of stairs, and I couldn't even walk. I had to like crawl up these steps. Were you like, I wish somebody was here, or were you like, thank God nobody's here? I was a little bit of both because I'd like somebody else to like maybe carry me to my truck because I couldn't walk. Like I literally crawled up these steps and then I got outside and I like held on to the house and I hopped to the corner of the house on one leg. Um, yeah. And then I think I had like crawl to my truck and then I called my boss. I was like, I can't, I can't work anymore today because I just fell down two flights of stairs. That reminds <laughs> me of that, that, that TikTok where the dude falls down oh, and he pulls a flower thing over his head and the, the top soil falls on him and then the freaking <laughs> p- flower pot hits him in the head Ugh. and it just keeps on coming yeah oh um, that was brutal um what was the story i was fixing to tell you oh man I just went out of my mind. Somebody just texted me, and I, you know, you know that. Yeah. that takes the, I know how that the, goes. But dude, it, I, it is it is like the um, when you think back on stuff like that, it's the funny the the people around that that make the job fun because the actual act of doing the work is not really fun. But <laughs> like, remember I told you we uh, it just came back into my mind, so I got to capitalize uh, on it. All right. You know, remember I told you we worked at those apartment complexes, and we we were the plumbers, mm-hmm. and um. Uh, one day, like you, you, you see some, you see some crazy stuff in apartments. Like people live. Let me just tell you this one particular instance. So we had a call. It was something like um, the three handle valve won't quit leaking, and we we go in there, and I got to paint the picture of this this um, apartment because you know from the outside. You, it's the same as all the others, but man, when we open that door, have you ever seen that show Hoarders? Yeah, I have. have I've you also seen... worked in Hoarders houses. Yeah. So you've seen it firsthand. Oh yeah. Man, when I opened the door and, and, and went in, it was immediate. Like I could tell there were, the, the kitchen was the first thing I saw and there was like stacks of mail all the way, like no room anywhere. Stacks of mail, I was stepping over pizza boxes, like rice roni boxes. There were little pig trails that you could get through. But immediately I was like, oh, my gosh. And in the kitchen, there were just dishes stacked up. It was like they couldn't use the kitchen sink because you couldn't even get to the faucet. It was that mm-hmm. that much, I mean, food in the dishes. And, Oof. I mean, and just like there was like a film, like a layer over the whole, if everything in there and um, the, the garbage can was overflowing. I don't even know why there was a, gar- the whole place was a garbage can. And like, as I moved into the den, you could see the couch, but there was no room on the couch except for like one person to sit. And just outside of that little outline of the, of where one person could sit, there was mail and food, like paper plates and the coffee table had, no room on it because it looked like nothing had been thrown away for years and years and years. And, um, I didn't know if this person was in there. Um, but I made my way to the, uh, and I had, I had another guy with me, but I made my way to, to his bedroom and there was just clothes piled up food again, food and, and like paper plates of where that he had been eating. And he was in there, he was laying on the bed and, um, I was like, hey, how you doing? I'm just here to fix Was he it. how I picture him? Like Do you picture an old man laying there sweating? Um fully clothed, I, not under the covers. Oh, uh, okay. That's kind of weird. Looked, I was picture I, I thought I thought maybe he was probably gonna be like in his underwear and he was <laughs> he was gonna look like he might be able to be on my six hundred pound life. <laughs> yeah. I mean I can see where you think that, but this guy <clears throat> this guy in particular, he rode bikes because I remember this was, golly, this was over 20 years ago, but I remember specifically he had his bike in there and uh, he was laying on the, he wasn't, he wasn't looking at me, but he was laying on the, on the bed. Again, he had all his clothes on and he, he kind of sat up and I said, I just had to find something to, to break the ice. And I said, Hey man, that's a, that's a cool bike. I like those, 
I like those tires. And he said, those aren't tires. Those are wheels. I was like, noted. And that's really all he said. And I said, uh, I'm going in here to fix the, uh, the shower. And when I pulled the shower back, it was just like soap scum and Ugh. like, like, uh, shampoo bottles it's just empty that just i don't know why i don't know i know that that's a sickness but i don't know what i don't i just know that i that's the first and the and the worst experience i've ever had actually seeing it up close and personal but i'm getting to the fun to the funny part so there was a there was a a resident painter that was there and um i didn't realize he was in the apartment but as I was walking back out to get my stuff, he he was painting a door in in the guy's apartment, and uh, he said, "Hey, Tony, what's going on?" And I was like, "Not much. How's it going?" He said, "Oh, pretty good." He said, "Man, it's gonna look good in here when I get done with this door." Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and dude, I just kept on walking. Dude, he didn't Ooh. even he didn't he he could he was so funny too, man, and he didn't even. He smiled, but he didn't let that guy know that he was joking. But I had to get out, dude. I had to get out, and I just fell oh. apart laughing because it was just so – he was standing in the midst of all the stuff I just described. Just, <laughs> yeah, man, it's going to look great in here once I'm done with this door. <laughs> so oh, that that's just awesome. made the whole situation easier. Oh, this is a fun episode. I think we should do this more. Maybe we'll do this like every other episode because this is this is way more fun than talking about actually having to build a business. <laughs> yeah, and this this episode in no way is going to help you, other than uh, maybe make you laugh and and give you a little comic relief from the day. But you know, there are plenty of serious things to talk about in business, and I, we probably should have laid this disclaimer out prior to starting. But if prior, you've made prior it to far, ending, yeah, <laughs> prior to ending or in the episode, yeah. at least, you know, we've been there with you and we, we, we realize that, you know, when you're in the truck, it can be difficult. And, um, there are a lot of uphill battles coming your way, but, you know, find something to laugh about, something to be happy about and, and get yourself out of it. Yeah. Um, and as long as you didn't fall down two flights of stairs or get stuck on the roof for an hour, you're having a pretty good day. Yeah. You live to fight um, yeah, maybe we should make the title of it like, hey, this isn't going to help you at all, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a great title. Uh, all right, let's all right, wrap man. it up. Later. See ya. All right, well, that does it for this episode of The Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.